What's up everybody? Pumpkin here. So I have a deck today for you guys. Uh, this is the type of deck that I've been wanting to play for months now. Uh, and up until now, it's been pretty bad uh, just because the power level just wasn't quite there compared to uh, other factions. But the time has come. Elf Scoia'tael is actually viable. Um, originally, first couple days of the patch, I tried to play elves. Didn't really work because I was trying to put this into the deck. Shiru, as you guys may know, is probably one of my favorite cards in the game. Um, but not really the best type of card to be playing in an elf deck. Elf decks typically are already... They, they do well in round one. Um, but round three, they struggle putting points on the board. And your entire win condition around a Shiru is pretty bad. Because if you queue into a deck that puts any kind of points on the board, uh, Shiru just doesn't cut it. Shiru only works against like control decks. Um, so you, you need a way to put points on the board slash remove taller points on the board. So typically I would play something like Scorch and Shiru, but Scorch is really finicky. So, um, yeah, essentially this list is pure elves. And then we have a few non-elf cards. The non-elf cards being, uh, Gigni and Professional. Uh, Gigni is very good in this meta because Dijkstra is around. Uh, Dijkstra goes very tall, uh, and they have lots of similar units with Townsfolk. So Gigni is very good against that. Uh, Kira is very, like, auto-include in Northern Realms right now, and all the units kind of line up themselves, and if they don't, you can use Ethne to line up. Uh, so Gigni is typically, like, 21 points against, uh, 21 plus body against, uh, Northern Realms with Kira, so that's very, very strong. Um, other matchups, not too hard to find value because you're not running an incredible amount of removal in this list. Professional. Professional is there, um, typically because your opponents will know that you're playing Gigni because... Well, they just magically know. Um, so a lot of the times they will uh, boost one of their units out of uh, like out of Gigni range. So an example would be, let's say your opponent has like two sevens on the board. They'll play something or they'll boost something up to like 15 or something. Not that that really makes sense, but they, they do it anyway. So you get to kind of get extra value with professional and remove that. Um, also, professional is good in a round that's not the round that you're playing Gigni. So like, let's say I'm playing against uh, Dijkstra and they're playing uh, Townsfolk, obviously, in round three. You don't mind really using Professional in round one or two or three if they if you need to use it on something like... Uh, hmm, what's the card called? I'm blanking out. Uh, I'm going to forget. The five provision card that... Or four provision card, four strength. I uh, get plus two if you spend two coins. Um... Yeah, whatever that card is. Gets very tall. Um, Professional's good against it. Nova Guardian Justice. This is not a card you see in Elf Square Tell typically. Um, but I think it's good enough. So, uh, often, Justice plus Oak in round three is enough to beat most decks. Uh, if you save Justice plus Oak plus whatever else you draw in that round, usually that's enough to win. Just because Justice is proactive. It's a lot of points. It's harder to interact with them because of the shields. Um, and Oak is kind of a nice finisher, uh, which is also why it makes it into the list. So, um, really strong deck in round one. Eisengrim got a massive buff. Uh, you play this card in round one, you almost never lose a round. Uh, Yaven's also quite good now. Um, uh, basically the more elves you play, the more value these two cards get. So playing them in round one is never a bad thing. Don't be afraid to play every single card in round one, uh, with the exception of Gigni. If you're playing against Northern Realms, you're probably going to need Gigni for round three. If you're playing against Dijkstra, you're definitely going to need Gigni in round three. Um, if you're playing against any hyper-thin Nilfgaard, whether that be uh, Usurper, Calvi, or Ardol, all three of those. Okay, the, the Syndicate card that I forgot is Jackal. So, yeah, I remembered. Uh, save Gigni for round three against uh, any form of hyper-thin Nilfgaard. Same goes for Professional. Um, yeah. It's a really good deck. If you've been wanting to play an Elf Scoia'tael deck, I highly suggest you play it. Uh, I'm not really going to go through every card. I, I went through the, the major ones. Uh, Roach is there for extra thinning and a lot of extra points in round one. Erlen plus Roach is an extra eight points in round one, which is a lot. It's a lot. Uh, not all decks run Roach right now, so having those extra points is significant. Um, Isengrim and Yaven are really, really good in round one. Teruvial is just a solid eight for eight. Gets more value if your opponent Roach stacks. Uh, probably the worst gold in this deck is Siren, but... It's nice. It allows you to set up for Gigni. Um, anything else to mention? Dragoons are good for Gigni. Sapper, I play because some people are playing Artifacts. Cleaver Muscle, you need at least one. 
um, for justice. You could play two if you're finding that bricking is happening from time to time or you want to aggressively mulligan in round three. Uh, you could drop a sapper for muscle. Archers are good. Vanguards are good. Swordmasters are great. Uh, BME. Just play these really early. Don't get too greedy with these. If your opponent plays a unit on a row and you can hit it, go ahead and hit it. Um, just You don't really want to brick with these. Um, and yeah, I would say play these before vanguards, uh, assuming you're going second. If you're going first, you play the vanguards first. And neophytes. only reason neophytes are in this list is because uh, it increases the odds of getting Aileron out in round one. Um, often you queue into a heavy removal deck and you don't get Aileron out in round one if you don't have neophytes. Um, also... They're kind of five for fours, kind of, um, because an extra body means an extra point on Yaven and Isengrim. So if you have either Yaven and I or Isengrim or both uh, in the round that you're playing the Neophytes, the Neophytes are kind of worth five for four. So that, that's kind of nice. Uh, and it increases the odds of getting Aileron out, which is obviously very important. I said I wouldn't go through every card, and I just went through every card. Anyways, basic game plan. Win round one. It's pretty easy to do with Aileron, Roach, and uh, Isengrim slash Yaven. Um, I typically don't bleed round two. The exception would be I feel like I have to, or maybe I'm playing against like a heavy engine Northern Realms deck or something, in which case I will bleed if my hand warrants it. So a, a good hand to bleed in round two would be something like Justice Oak plus other cards like maybe Malayan. Uh, a bad hand would be something like Gigni, Sapper, and Teruvial. You don't want to bleed with that hand. You'll lose. Um, so yeah, typically only bleed round two if I have Justice Pretty straightforward. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the games, and I'll see you guys on the next video. There will be no negotiation. Does Spalatel exist at the moment? Um, I played one the other day. It wasn't very good. But I suppose it could exist. Let us sing the song of steel. I don't play tar removal. What is he gonna do? Cock me? I welcome it. You have my thanks. No, please don't. Snitches get snitches. Actually runs cleaver. You piece of shit. I'll feed you to the crows. Why do you play cleaver and Francesca? Carlo, I apologize. Dwarfless usually do. Yeah, I mean, it's a Dwarfless. I was kind of hoping it was a Papiga Squatel list, but he's playing like a real list with good cards in it. Oh, you've done it now. I was hoping. How do we beat a real deck? Great question. I don't have an answer. Is there anything you'd recommend against all the Nilfgaard garbage ro roaming around? Nilfgaard garbage? Not Dijkstra? Um, Squiatel. I don't know about that one, lad. I feel like you're not supposed to play that in round one. Eh. Yeah. Yay, we got Aileron out. Pog Champ. I don't know, there's hope for this deck. It has a lot of tempo. Eight free points is kind of cute, I suppose. Now we just top get Gigni, Professional, and Justice, and we win. Oh, very good. No bleed. Shira to burn Dwarvens would be nice. Yeah, but the problem with Shira is if you're playing Shira, you're losing value on cards like Gigni. I would love to play Shiru, but the reality is Ethne just doesn't have- Oh, easy, easy, easy. You don't have enough pings for everything. 
Uh, Sapper is a card. We can keep it. I don't know. Maybe he plays the boost card. The, uh, AL card that boosts by three every two turns. That card used to see play. Maybe it'll see play. I don't know. We don't really need the mulligan. Our hand's fine. Dragoon would be nice, but I have Dragoon here, and this, sh this should be enough. Have you tried Aglice's patch? No, but nothing got buffed, so why would I? I actually thought of making a cheeky Aglice deck with Renew. The idea was I was going to, in round one, if I lose coin flip with TA, I would fob water, rip Aglice out, TA her. For seven. Oh! You see? I see. Value. May your sword and arm so, and then you would, like, Francesca, you would renew her later and garrison her later. So the idea was you play Aglace in round one and three. It's a cute idea. I don't know how good it is because I never tried it, but in theory it might be okay. Pog value. I'm so glad I kept this. Splendid maneuver. Thanks, mate. Watch him have ale. The boosty ale card. So, like, yeah, it's an easy professional, but, like, is that correct? So, if I'm playing professional, I'm making my Gigni harder to activate. And if he rips Justice into the fives, those are nice Gigni targets. So, I don't actually think I want to kill it. I'll lock it, but I don't want to kill it. I, I don't feel comfortable killing it, because I lower the odds of hitting the Gigni. You'll just it's another five. What are the odds you play Francesca Gigni? I'm going to go with a solid zero because that would be pretty stupid. I mean, yeah, you have Dorvin Mercenaries to line up, but like, that's it. I don't know. I, I need the Oak value. Good. Oh. No, oh, you're supposed to do the other ones. Oh, do it again on the back row. Go again. One more time. One more time. Oh. Back row? Nah. How do I kill fours? This. Okay. I don't give a shit about these. They'll line up. He'll play the doot 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 plus two plus two and just gig me. You'll think we'll see a hotfix? Didn't they already say there's no hotfix? What the? Mate! No, where's the doot 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 card? Wrong card. I guess we won't kill this. I guess four more value. Now play Polly right here. There you go. Dennis. Same thing. That's what I meant. Doot doot doot. Easy. GG.
What do you think about the Hearthstone expansion? It's fun. I'm enjoying it. To Imperial Arses. So he's last right. Onward, Fryhead. He bricks. Yeah, he played the other one earlier in round two after I dry passed. Double chase. Definitely has last right. No Still a 9 for 8. It's not bad. Ah, this game's over. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. What the? Oh, you can't damage your own rose anymore? They nerfed this? Why'd they nerf Teruvial? Oh, she used to damage your own rose. Yeah, no, I just he wanted to see my last card. Log. Something new about something somewhere. I don't know. It's just something new. Counts 184. Thank you for the six months. Welcome back, lad. There's a point, but we gain a point if it does if it doesn't die. You never continued my question. Yeah, I probably did. I get sidetracked. Sidetracked very easily. What was your question? Dance of death. Ha! Ha! Why would DJ be more imbalanced than full test when he loses to full test? What? DJ doesn't lose to full test. Does he? I wouldn't think he does. Play around, Vernon. The only reason you would ever do that. Oh, different card games compared to Gwen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should kill it, but it's so much to invest. I'd rather not. I don't know. So, most games, they typically copy some aspect from Hearthstone. It's just what you notice. Um, that's typically a downside. Maybe we can get out here. Um, so like uh, an example, uh, and then every now and then a game tries to like come up with something new. So an example would be uh, the Elder Scrolls Legend tried to do something new with like the two rows, which is kind of cute. I have to push. The reality is, if I don't win this round, I lose the game. I need last save with Gigney. I don't have a choice. Da. Have you played Teppin? No, but I've seen Ocean playing it. Voltes can run Vampire? Yeah, that's true. That's fair. Okay, I didn't think of that. I don't know. Yesterday, I I had a I was playing the hyper thin list, and I played an eighteen points Arthesius, and they registered it, and they still lost. And that's a thirty point swing. I don't know. Like I think full test is OP if you draw perfectly. If you get like the nuts, then it's insane. But if you don't get the nuts, it's just whatever. I want to keep this so that I can hard mulligan it next turn and not get screwed. I need to mulligan again. Hitting Gigni is imperative. Um, I don't know. I guess I don't need Dragoon. Pog. Being full test is silly. So like any deck? No, not like any deck. Full test is much more high rolly than any other deck in the game at the moment. Right? Like if you draw the if you draw this and if you draw this plus this plus blue stripe scout blue stripe scout reinforcements and you play all of that and then you like top deck Pavetta like that's the nuts. 
We have two bricks in the deck. Because we still have alley. Nice. No brick. Oh, no oak. Oh, we don't- we didn't actually have alley. No oak is kind of unfortunate, but whatever. I don't think we need it. Elder Scrolls Legend is surprisingly fun. I mean... What? Okay, you'll need- I need a little bit more context. Like, the first time you played it, or, like, a year after you've been play like, yeah, a little more context is needed. Just saying that the game is fun. I mean, every game is fun for a short period of time. I have never- there has only been one game I have ever played where I started playing the game, and I hated it. And, like, fell asleep. Only one game. Right, and you guys already know what game that is. Thronebreaker? No, I didn't hate Thronebreaker. It's just boring. Wow. Sure. It's cute. What the? I mean, yeah, okay. I guess. Are you guys question? No, the answer is Artifact. I played Artifact for the first time, and it was the most boring thing I've ever done. I was 20 minutes into the game, and I wanted to quit. I only kept playing because I was playing with a friend. The most boring shit I've ever played. And then I played again because the person told me that it would be more fun the second time around. So I played it again. Nope. Not any more fun. Terrible. It's a shitty game. I don't know. This is, this is pushing it. I don't know if I like this. Playing this and hitting the Roche down to four. It's like, yeah, yeah, I can do it. Do I really want to do that? Yeah. At least three points, but we gain a bunch. I suppose it's okay. Move Pavetta to range throw. Eh. That's kind of annoying. Okay, though. Actually, yeah, this is the card I'm worried about. Wait, what? Oh, okay, whatever. Kind of funny. I don't know. Do I really want to kill this? Yes. Why? Why not? I guess. I don't think it's necessary. I am ready. Okay. I don't want to play this. I lose points on my Teruvial. I think the plan is just to play Teruvial and smack. For your best. What do you think about CDPR's decision not to nerf or to change Dijkstra? Um. I mean, we've already seen a uh, decrease in play rate. I mean, okay, I, I can only speak for myself, I suppose, but I personally have seen almost no DJ or Dijkstra play. 
nobody plays it anymore. But that could just be the case at the rank that I'm playing at. Maybe, maybe... Apparently at like rank 3, it sees a lot of play, so I, I'm not sure. Um, oh, it's a different trap. <laughs> Mr. Streamer, why do I not enjoy this game anymore? Smalu. I don't know. Maybe you enjoyed playing Skellige and Skellige didn't get buffed. Quipped to Importa, thank you for the seven. I don't know. Do SK players still play this game? I ran into Azakov playing full on Igor Townsfolk DJ yesterday. He didn't get a GG. I hope you won. Alright. It's pretty stacked row. I think we're safe to reveal here. Whee! Um. Killing shit is bad. There's actually a correct line of play here. I wonder if we'll see it. Also, his self. Well, okay, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. Alright, he found it. You need to kill your own and make room, and you can kill this too, and you can play the salt kirk. Kirk. Dude, you better speed this game up. You got like eight more disconnects and then the game will concede for you. That's gonna be close. I mean, depending on what he has. He's lagging because he's watching the stream. I didn't think so. If he has Regis, he can't play it anymore. Because he can't unro cap himself. Regis and Southkirk are both bricked. Let's get this over with. Wow. That's cool. he's cool yeah he's fun but like he needs some serious buffs for me to even consider playing him it's just too much thinking thinking is hard man could discard be good this patch if you run scorch sure you need a way to deal with dijkstra why not make a Francesca trap deck where you miraculously win round one and then play four traps round three? I know you're copying, but I actually did that. I made a deck like that and it worked really well. I won a lot of games with it. We could do it again. You guys want to play a Francesca trap deck? We could do it. The problem is, it sucks against Dijkstra, so like, what's the point? That's the problem with the meta right now. Like, building a deck, if it doesn't play tall removal, it's a bad deck, because you just lose to this. And you can't outpoint this deck, it's impossible. You have to 2-0 them. So I can play everything in my hand except for the Gigni. If I play Gigni, I auto-lose. We have no immunity, which is potentially a concern. What is my dad doing here? Your tricks will not save you, Duan. Fit Yorvis helps with DJ. Not if they're sniping, it doesn't. I don't know. Pitfall Yorvis is really fun to play off stream. Playing it on stream is a nightmare. Because it's a zero tempo play. 
Like, if Pitfall Trap was something, like, if your opponent passes or flips over and gets, like, plus six or something, like, okay, then it's playable. But, like, playing Pitfall Trap on stream is just a nightmare. It's a really good card as long as you win round one, but the deck struggles to win round one a lot. I, only lose I did notice that Serpent Trap is more useful this meta. Yeah, I can definitely see that. That, that definitely makes sense. There are definitely more specials in this meta. Is Usurper only deck that can deal with DJ? No, Tall Removal can, like Gigni or Skorka. Are you seeing no units in Pro Ladder? Uh, we queued into a no unit Woodland two or three games ago, so yeah, I guess the answer is yes. Should I craft a DJ deck to reach Pro Rank? I'm 8 now. Um... Hmm. Uh, I don't know. Yes, I guess, if you like winning. But at the same time... So if you're new to the game, it's probably not a great idea. Because people are teching pretty hard against it, and people will bleed you. Um, also, if you're asking the question of whether or not you should craft... My guess is you're probably newer to the game. Uh, and he'll probably get nerfed next patch, which means if you craft him and he gets nerfed, that kind of sucks as a new player. So this is such a bad play if I have Colorino. Whatever. So, I mean, I mean, short term, sure, I, I suppose it's fine. But long term, it's probably not a very good idea. Getting Syndicate deck is kind of easier because all cards in one type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, you can just buy the Novigrad kegs, right? And you get all this shit. Don't you get full mill value? The only time you get full mill value is if they rework a card. Right? So, like, in the Slash patch, the only thing that got full mill value are, like, reworks on NR cards. Buffs and nerfs, they typically don't give you full mill value. Can you play an Assimilate deck? I, this is such a bad play. It, it actually angers me how bad of a play this is. It hurts me on the insides. Like, if I have call, I punish the shit out of this. Feels bad, man. Just play call? No, nah, call's a shit card. It's only good in round one. Which means it's bad. I hate cards that are only good in situational rounds. They're really frustrating to play. It's a good play if you know your opponent's hand. Not false. I don't really want to play an Assimilate deck. I don't know. It, it feels kind of lackluster. If I want crazy RNG, just play Hearthstone. Do you think Tactics can be tier 1 after DJ fix? Apparently Tactics are fine right now. I don't know. People have been saying that Tactics do fine against DJ, like an Ardle deck. Will you stream Hearthstone? Probably not, because I get, like, not not threats. It hasn't come to that yet, but, like, you guys are pretty, pretty vocal when I play games that aren't Gwent. I mean, shit, I was playing TFT, and you guys were, like, going at me. Carry carrying about viewers. I don't know. I mean, you guys are the ones who watch me, so I should care. Mm. 
Because it, it's two different things. One, my chat dies, which makes sense. It's lower viewership. But the people who do say things, they come in and they say things along the lines of, why aren't you streaming Gwent? This game is shit. Go play Gwent. Right? Stuff like that. Which, you know, don't really want to read that kind of stuff. A stream title of Boop. Who do you think you are? Uh, Pumpkin? Just don't read chat? No, but I like reading chat. Many of us come here to watch you regardless of the game. Yeah, I mean, people say that. And then they don't show up. Actions speak louder than words. Eh, see, keep this for circle. How's Ethne working for you? Um, this deck's been okay. Play what makes you happy? Yeah. Yeah. No circle in this deck? I mean, that's fine. Then I just play a five. I don't care. Five's fine. It's bigger than four. Not false. No Merc to Brack? Nah, there's no room. And we're not playing XD, so there's no point. How come Tactics card dealing really high damage me is really bad because of that? I don't know what that sentence said. When is more TFT? I don't know. There's a new patch today, isn't there? But I haven't been following. Like, I know... But does that... Did the new Hextech characters come in? Like, Vi? Because then I can go six Brawlers. I like playing Brawlers. Does that mean Gwen doesn't make you happy? No, I'm having a lot of fun with this patch. But, like, the reason why I was playing TFT those days was because I wasn't really enjoying the meta. More relaxing to play Gwen. Mm. Me this way. Void brawlers are broken? What are they? Uh, void is what? Like... Uh, what's the damage thing called? What does Void do now? It like bypasses armor, it's true damage, I think. I don't know, they were going back and forth on true damage like a lot of times. True damage, okay. You can't grow if you don't try new things. Not false. There will be an auto chess tournament with a $1 million prize pool in October. That's the Chinese one though, right? The one with like the original creators of auto chess? The ch Chinese one? So is he not playing combo? What's going on? We're just like do do doing around. You just not play combo? Alright, okay. We will cleanse Nogigred with fire. Fifteen years. Good 
If his last card is exactly 15 years, we win. But we can't play Gigni this turn. We have to play this this turn. This is a full board wipe. Pentaphors. It better be 15 years though, otherwise we lose. If it's the boosty one, we lose. Can you just concede? Alright, concede. You lose. It's over. Alright, well, we get to sit here for a bit. I'm wiping your whole board, mate. It's all gonna disappear. Wait, can you ping your own cards? Oh, good. Alright, we win. GG. If we had played professional, though, we would. Or if we had played Gigni last turn, we would lose. This is why I like cards having Rowlock is so important, because I can make plays like this. Our daughters are faring far better than you. Why the BM? He's playing ethical? I wouldn't say bounty is ethical, but sure. I guess it's more ethical than townsfolk. Sh sure. It is more ethical, but it's still not ethical. Ethical and syndicate doesn't exist. Do you think Bounty will get balanced in a way that Purify cards will get buffed? Honestly, in my opinion, I think they should have buffed Purify. Uh, the card, what is it? Five Provisions, Four Strength, Purify a Unit, Bronze, Neutral. Um, that card should have been buffed to Four Provisions. Um, just so that, like... Because the problem is, like, you can counter Bounty, but you, you can't really. Because... No one's going to play that card. That card sucks unless it's removing bounty. And you can't consistently remove bounty. So you can't play the card. So you don't play the card. Right? So like, yeah. It's kind of kind of annoying. Like, I don't mind. Like, every card that purifies should break even. And then you can make an argument that bounty is balanced. Because then there's, like, cards that you can throw into your deck for counterplay. Yeah. God save the queen. Okay. Do we get greedy and play the other or go ahead and play the BME? I think we could get punished pretty hard. If he roast acts aggressively enough, we could get punished. How's your eye? I'm doing my my eye is fine. I didn't realize it was a migraine. Like, I don't know. I guess I never knew the definition of a migraine. But, like, they're really bad. Like, you can't do anything. Oh, it's a different like, track. your day just goes to shit. Like, I can't even imagine, like, if you're at work or something and you get a migraine. Like, you just have to stop what you're doing and do nothing. It's terrible. Alchemist, thank you for the 13 months. Welcome back. Thanks, mate. 13 months. Like... If it's a headache, like, I thought migraines were just really bad headaches. And really bad headaches are fine. Like, yeah, they suck to do, like, work or do anything with them. But, like, you can still do stuff. But, like, the migraine where everything starts, not spinning, but, like, everything gets really blurry. You can't do anything. Like, you can lie in a bed. That's about it. Or you can go on a walk. That's what I ended up doing. But, like, yeah, it sucks. I don't know what people do with migraines. I guess they do nothing. We're losing a lot of points on Vanguard, but it doesn't matter. Because we're removing everything he plays, which is more important. Trader! Your eyesight? Yeah, the eyesight just kills it. Like, like if it was just a headache, that's manageable. Try to get out here. Is having a skull full of razors shaking around? Yeah, that's pretty accurate. 
I think the worst combo would be Vertigo plus a Migraine. That would be death. Hopefully no one ever has to experience that. Like, that's the type of thing where you get some kind of medication to knock you out because you don't want to experience that. Push him around a little bit. I want to thin these cards because I need to rip Gigney. Hitting Gigney is very important for this matchup, so thinning two cards should be very good. Migraines in high school is super shitty. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, I, I, I don't even know how you deal with that. Thankfully, I never had them in high school, but, like, if you had a migraine in high school, what do you do? Tell your teacher I can't see anything and they laugh at you? Like... I mean, hopefully they don't laugh at you, but... Gencius, thank you for the five months. Appreciate it. Thank you for the support. Lol, you can't see. I don't know. I wasn't planning on pushing this guy, but he's playing bad units that I get to clear with upside. What does this do? Give three charges to an allied unit. No. I guess we're just two rowing him. He's not playing anything. He's just playing like potatoes. I was leaving lessons to basically lay down at nurses until it ended. Yeah, but does it end? That's the real question is does it actually end? So like this last time was the worst it's ever been. Normally it ends pretty quickly. Normally you take like a 30 minute nap and you're done. But this time it was the rest of the day. It didn't go away. It's kind of annoying. Three. He was ending for the lesson. Oh, okay. That's pretty big. Five, seventeen, eighteen. Hold on. <laughs> what was that math? We're taking five here over two turns. He can do this and get another plus one. So six. So he's at twenty-four. He needs to play a nine. It's not that hard. It's just like a salt kirk. Question is, do we go deeper here? Uh, yeah, I don't mind. That's pretty decent. I don't want to row stack. I'm scared of like Lacerator Sabrina. We just play Oak Round 3. I don't care. Or if he plays a Papiga Engine, I'll play it this round. What is this guy playing? I don't know. He's playing the Concede Full Tesla deck. Uh, we just played against this dude. He was playing Monsters, I think. So, like, this this type of mechanic already existed back in Homecoming. Like, when Homecoming first came out, you guys didn't... Or some of you guys don't know this, but... Okay. Um, yeah, so there were, like, zero provision cards and, like, two provision cards. Um, and the problem was they were basically just auto-include and you essentially just high-rolled your opponent. And I felt really bad. Like, you would put a bunch of these in your deck, and you would just always mulligan them. And at the end of the game, you would- or at the end of, like, at the beginning of round three, you would just hope to have, like, all gold cards. He lose to us in the net deck? That's funny. So yeah, no, I don't think they should ever introduce, like, 3p cards, or 2p, or 1p, or negative p. It's just, there's no point. Because then you start walking into, like, high roll territory, and it just doesn't feel good. Them to a man. What cards were to 0p? So, like, D-bomb was 0p. Negative p would be broken. Ah, would it, though? 
I can give an example. What if there was a card that was... Negative 6p, but at the beginning of the game, your opponent got a 10-point immune body on their side of the board. You still want to play that? Like, if you lose coin flip, you just auto-lose the game. Troop yeah, charm, on. yeah. Wasn't there a gold? Yeah, there was a card rarity before. They decided to change it. So before it was four gold, six silvers, and then the rest were bronzes. Uh, they made it so the, uh, the game is provision-based now. Which some people like, some people dislike. I think it's better because deck building is a lot more fun. Uh, typically in the past with deck building, it was simply... Um, wow, he actually net decked. This is card for card. Uh, it used to be... Yeah, it's definitely easier to bounce. What is he doing? I mean, keeping up is cute, but you're not going to keep up. Well, the good thing is he's not sniping. That's nice. Because that's like a really bad play if he's sniping. Okay, so now... Now when you go to build a deck, you have a lot more flexibility. Before, what you would do is you would play the best three gold cards in that faction, then you'd have like one flex. So a lot of the decks would look the same because you would just play the best of whatever gold cards you have for that faction. Um, which means you didn't have a lot of flexibility when you went to build like a unique deck. It was just play whatever the best is, done. Whereas now... You still kind of do that, but I don't know. If, if you want to be playing like different packages, it's why I really like the change to Merktelbrock because Merktelbrock is now a playable gold card. Before he was unplayable outside of um, Northern Realms. What is this guy doing? He's not winning this round. So like, okay, let's well, take Squayatal. Squayatal, Oak, and Justice are auto-included, and then after that, you can kind of just do whatever you want. I mean, look at this deck, for example. Professional, Gigni, Isengrim, none of these are really see- Ah, eh, Gigni maybe sees play in other decks, depending on the list. So Ponies and Witchers at the beginning of Homecoming? Yeah, kind of. That's why uh, the beginning of Homecoming was really stale, because every deck was the same. Every deck auto-included, like, Roach, Witchers, and Unique Cairo into every deck. Right, which is really, and then people started running like Blue Dream, and like a lot of the decks were similar, like cross factions, and that should never be the case. All right, like if you have a Squayatel deck and you have a Northern Realms deck, and you put them side by side, and they have like ten similar cards, that's a problem. That means the neutrals are too good. Like, like, you should not have that many similarities between faction decks. Have you played Heroes of Might and Magic? I don't think I have. Stop. I don't want to brick on the muscle. We have to be very cautious this game because we know he's running a net deck. Every card is card for card, which means he also has this card right here. So we have to kind of play around Gigni. It's going to be hard, though, because it's a 10 or 9 card round. Call of the Forest Airline is no longer a thing. It's not that it's not a thing. It's just it's not good enough. So the reality is it's a really good combo if and only if you get it in round 1 because you typically get Airline out in round 1. After round 1, it's just bad. So, yeah, I don't know. I've played decks that run cards like, um, sec. I've played decks that run like fables and stuff, but you lose so many provisions for adding cons consistency. So the 
obvious play here is to play Dragoon, but I think it's wrong. So the reason I think it's wrong is, A, he still has Malayne, which means he can just outright kill it. And B, I can use this to line up Gigni, which is going to be what matters in this game. So I think it's incorrect. So we're not going to move it back. Here comes Ailey. Oh, it's a different trap. <laughs> Sir you to you. Bost, thank you for the three months. You who, how's it going, mate? Welcome back. Thank you, lad. Gracias. They can hide, but there is no escape. You who. How do I play Fable in this deck? I'll feed you to the crows. I, I could have played around that. How do I play Fable in this deck? No, because I'd have to put Fable in, I'd have to put Call in, and I'd have to put a third special in. That's really bad. I don't want to do that. Yeah, let's not do that. So probably get professionaled. Just fine. He has one Siren left, so he's one more movement in the deck. It's really nice when people in that deck. It's easier to play around cards. How popular are artifacts high rank? I see none. No mercy. Like artifact only decks? Uh I haven't seen any either. Or I, I see some every now and then. I mean, if he just wants to give it to me, I don't really care. I'll just rip it. He can counterplay this by playing, like, Oak. But playing Oak is really risky, because I can just downping it into sixes. We're waiting a long time on this, because this gives him the Gigni, and I don't want to give him the Gigni. By not playing this, we play around Gigni. So his hand is something like Pro, Gigni, Oak, other card. Probably Malayan or Siren. Humans are not There's the Siren. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Just keep playing around Gigni. The nice thing is this is 17, which means this goes to 19. So his hand is Gigni Pro card. Uh, Oak. I don't think he has Malayan. He would have played it. Uh, that's not true. He could still have Malayan. But he definitely has Oak. Plays around Gigni, plays around Professional, which are his last two cards. How come Malayan is a staple in all Skoetal decks? Because it's good removal and flexibility with the backside pings, but Prince Stennis is not. Wait, what?
So like I can be greedy. But I'm assuming his last card is Gigney. Because like his Gigney puts the row to 21 here, which means I can down ping this to six and get twelve. So I get an extra point. But the reality is if his last card is Gigney, we win. If his last card is professional, we also win. He wouldn't have made that play. His last card is guaranteed Gigney. It has to be. Otherwise his plays don't make sense. Which means his last card is Gigney. Because he's out of pro range. I, I guess he can pro this. But I'm assuming it's Gigney. Either way, it doesn't matter. Game's over. Prince Dennis is opposite of Malayan. Yeah, and he started to see more play. He's actually pretty decent if you're playing Scythemen. But the reality is... Oh, he does have Professional. Okay. All right, the reality is... Um, doing damage is always better than boosting. Unless you're playing against no unit decks, right? Because you can remove one of your engines. Boosting a unit by four doesn't really matter. All right, GG. Mirrors are always a lot of fun.